Hello, thank you for watching our video. This is the introduction of how we look at the relationship between health and travel. And this is the introduction of what health tourism worldwide really stands for. My name is Laszlo Putko. I am the co-founder and the CEO of this initiative, working in the sphere of health and travel for 20 plus years and have the experience from four different continents and I'm happy to share with you how we look at these questions and opportunities based on the visits of over 40 countries in the world. I believe we need to mention that uh, by now we shouldn't be looking at lifespan and more likely we need to look at health span, especially in the light of the COVID-19 global epidemic. I think everybody now recognizes how important health really is and not the lack of it, but more like having it and uh, pursuing. Whatever health uh, we're looking at, it would be physical health, mental health, um, even psychological health or spiritual health. We need to consider the various opportunities here and how that can be translated into travel products. In many countries, societies still look at the lifespan but the World Health Organization as well now rec uh, recognizes that we need to look at health span more importantly. In terms of well-being and tourism, there are terminologies that you might say are synonyms and they might mean very similar things. Still, well-being is understood to be sitting on the top of the pyramid and this is what scientists, this is what uh, strategists look at first, how they decide well-being uh, domains and how well-being can be translated into services and how all services can contribute to one's well-being. It's understood that traveling per se contributes to your well-being or to our well-being and most of the time is a positive thing, maybe short-lived, so it doesn't last for very long, but still uh, after travel uh, people tend to be more relaxed, more calm, happier, having great memories, which they would like to repeat and would like to keep. So traveling uh, do, uh, does contribute to well-being, but uh, that's the reason why we don't call it well-being tourism, but tourism contributing to well-being. You might say that this is uh, just a semantical issue and it's all the same, but when you look at uh, communication options, when you look at product development options, we need to be very specific about how we call uh, what in this business. So where we are now? I think most of you understand that people do travel for dental services, uh, surely because of the price differences and the availability in a different country. And it's very standard. Most of the treatments are very standardized. So you understand what the root canal is, you understand what the veneers are, and you understand uh, what uh, other treatments can be. But still, uh, we're still are traveling for other services. It can be beauty services, uh, holistic or not, or invasive or not, or minimal invasive. Uh, these are, again, standard services, can be uh, multiplied, and they're not really dependent on the actual countries or destinations offers. Most of the countries uh, look at treatments such as uh, therapies, body treatments, facial treatments, which would be in the wellness domain. Some of them are medical, but most of them are wellness. Uh, and also we have to mention the large supply of natural resources, in particular hot springs, or even sea or sand or nature, which can be used for uh, health tourism services and development. I think we have to mention uh, status anxiety that people uh, do have which is now changing to health anxiety. We are worried. We would like to know what's going on. We would like to know how we can improve our being, how we can stay healthy, how we can become more healthy, how we can get rid of pain, how we can avoid pain. And this is where health tourism can do a lot. Uh, it might be perceived as a risky service because we talk about physical or mental health but the personal motivation is very strong and probably one of the strongest in, in any kind of business uh, in tourism since uh, it's personal. I know that I want to change something or I'm looking for some inspiration even when you're talking the holistic part. 
interesting developments such as first world problems, as we call it, when people can't even sleep. So they go to a one week uh, sleeping package. This is just an indication of what kind of services we can develop since the demand is there, urban environments, uh, because of the stress for life, which may change given the uh, world epidemic as we live now. But still, uh, these issues will come back to many since they can't sleep, they are stressed. So when we talk about health, you don't need to work, uh, always think about invasive treatments and plastic surgery or uh, laser surgery. We need to think of uh, the complexity of health. You need to think of the totality of health, um, both physical and mental. And then we need to look at what kind of services you can develop, either as a destination, as a region, because now we have healing landscapes, healing regions, where a large number of different services from accommodation down to activities and uh, gastronomy contribute to the same objective. And uh, this is where we have clusters that are supporting the large number of business entities and organizations aiming for the same. Or you can be a service facility, a hotel, a resort, a retreat, an individual, an entrepreneur, a restaurant, spa, clinic, a uh, physician. What do you would like to know, do you have an opportunity in uh, health tourism? And this is when we talk about products, we talk about markets and services, we introduce you to the large number of opportunities. Uh, that you can uh, pick from and yeah, you can identify a relevant market for that. This might seem uh, just an exciting, uh, interesting thing. Still, this is beyond that, since uh, this is something which is something very, very, tra very traditional for the local market, and this is in Japan. The volcanic sand, which is heated by the volcano from under and uh, having a nap, in that sand is fantastic to your uh, toxins and also does amazing things to your skin. So again, to, to those who don't understand how it works, it may look like just an entertaining, exciting thing that I would like to try. But those who really are taken care of by professionals, therapists, or even doctors, they can really enjoy the benefit multifold. So service development and product development, this is what we can help you with. I think it's, it's important here to mention where medical tourism and where awareness tourism stand, since uh, it is understood uh, that health tourism incorporates both. So we do have those who go traveling for medical services and also we have those who travel for awareness services. And the totality of that could come under the health tourism umbrella. As the World Tourism Organization, the European Travel Commission, uh, in a project which we did for them two years ago, um, rightly established and recommends this um, terminologies to governments and destinations to use, because to understand what the market does and what opportunities we have, we should apply very similar terminologies and uh, definitions. Also, which is a very exciting opportunity to many destinations and to many owners in particular, uh, you can look at the large number of uh, facility types uh, and locations and options. Uh, you can have medical services on cruises, we can have wellness uh, services on day spas, we have destination spas, we have longevity centers, we have clinics, we have healthy hotels, which are not really medical, nor really wellness, but they just have uh, healthy options. We have whole healing destinations, and sometimes we have health cities and health villages. So to identify where you belong, what options you have as a destination or as a developer or as an owner, there's a large number of opportunities you can choose from, but the really crucial component here is that you really have to be uh, right. You really have to be right. Uh, not just using any of these terminologies, labels, and not doing the homework and not developing the corresponding products. So as a summary, I would like to highlight the spectrum, which starts from hedonism and self-gifting. And yes, often wellness-related services are gifting to one and sometimes to, your, to yourself, since you deserve it, you want it, you need to be pampered, you're tired, you're exhausted. So the hedonistic self-gifting component is a very strong demand 
especially for wellness, but the same is for uh, uh, plastic surgery in particular, since often it's a gift to have a different uh, augmentation for your breasts or your front bottoms or for even calf muscles for gentlemen. It, it's really a gift to yourself. Of course, leisure and recreation has a large number of um, services that are relevant here, often fitness related or uh, hot spring based. And we also have to mention the healthy options that we have at hotels and resorts. You can have uh, juice corners, you can have, uh, instead of alcohol, you can have fresh fruit in your minima every day. It depends on the hotel or resort facility, how they look at health. But more and more people are looking for those options that I can choose to do that. That's why we have a running concierge who knocks on your door at seven in the morning and runs with you according to your expectations in terms of length or even the difficulty of the route. Also, we have something which is between the medical side and the uh, wellness side. And looking at the medical side first, we have the non-invasive medical services and the invasive medical services. And obviously, the more invasive we are, the less likely we would prefer to travel. However, there are technologies, equipment, physicians, uh, who or which would be available only at a foreign country and when it is really as serious as that you really uh, consider a foreign trip just to have the best available treatment. In medical wellness it's a combination of wellness services but supervised by uh, a medical professional. Many people don't quite know how to use saunas, many people don't know how to uh, create a ritual Therefore, often medical professionals would need to tell you exactly what order of wellness treatment, wellness treatments you would need to take, how long you should be taking them, and which one of them you would need to avoid. We also have to highlight uh, holistic and spiritual services and uh, treatments, since uh, to many that is not included in health or in health tourism in particular. But we understand that sometimes it's just hugging trees can sort a lot of problems out just to get closer to nature, just enjoy the nature in terms of its energy can change a lot physically as well as mentally. And yes, many people are very happy to take holistic spirituality based services and packages and visit destinations. In terms of um, the destination well-being landscape, we always recommend destinations to look at the three major pillars here, such as assets and resources, the agents that can help to translate the assets and uh, resources, and what kind of beneficiaries and users we can identify. Uh, often, what is missing is the education and the training. The service providers and the destination managers don't know how to translate it into health products. Media often likes to know something which is uh, really a buzzing concept, but doesn't quite understand how it works and why that would be good. So, and then you need governance. You need to help service providers, how to make tests, how to make clinical tests, clinical trials, how to have approval, how to have certification, how to combine the services, how to ensure quality, how to test quality, monitor quality. And we also need to look at what role the health tourism can play into the local economy. What kind of other services can be incorporated? How hospitality would need to develop and what services would need to add? So when we look at the whole uh, destination uh, well-being landscape, these are the tasks that we do and look at destinations and services and assets and resources and um, certainly the market players. So the question is, uh, is really health a luxury or a necessity? Because often we, when we talk to destinations, countries, brands, they say, oh, well, it's a luxury thing. It's not for everybody. I don't want to get involved. If you ask me, it's more like uh, a necessity. And uh, everybody would need to think of that. I call your attention to this study that we did for the World Tourism Organization and the European Travel Commission. And you can access it. And I believe it has all the necessary background information and tools. Uh, about which we're very happy to talk to you about. Uh, since this is the first document that looks at the uh, business, the concept and the components of health tourism globally and in a systematic way. Thank you very much for your attention and looking very much forward to talk to you about what kind of services and treatments 
uh, we can do and how we can uh, improve your competitiveness and your services in house tourism. Thank you.